Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Bianca. Welcome to Vintage on Tap. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about bound buttonholes. And there are so many ways to do bound buttonholes. I'm going to be showing you the way that I prefer to do them, uh, just because it's easier for me. It might be easier for you, but you guys can give it a shot, see if it works. Um, the part that I do want to focus on more than just the regular bound buttonhole, because as I said, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. I'm going to, um, you know, besides just doing the regular bound buttonhole, I'm going to be talking about the back of the bound buttonhole. So if, for example, you're going to be using this on a lining or um, on a coat that is going to be attached to a facing or whatever, you want to be able to open the, the, the bound buttonhole all the way to be able to accommodate that button. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I did is I cut out my sample pieces. Um, if you've never done a bound buttonhole, I recommend cutting out several just so you have a bunch of examples to practice from. Um, for this one, I went ahead and drew uh, rectangles that were uh, two inches by half inch. And so I did that on both like my main self fashion fabric that I was going to use for this, as well as on the areas that I'm just going to call like the lips of the bound buttonhole. That way it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, but same measurement on both just for this example. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put in your fabric on top of your fashion fabric. Now you're going to want to line up the rectangles on both the um, on both the like the lips fabric as well as the, the fashion fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pin and stick it into one particular corner, just like on one corner, and I'm going to match it up on the same corner on the fashion fabric, just so that I can make sure that those are lined up. And I'm going to do that with the opposite corner as well. Now this, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. This is just kind of to mark it and make sure everything lines up. Works for me. Doesn't take too long. So I'm kind of like moving the pins around to fix everything in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and use just regular pins and pin the main piece in place. And so at that point, I know it's not going to wiggle out of place. Now. The first thing you're going to do after you've pinned it together is um, you're going to go ahead and sew a rectangle around it. So let's go ahead and do that. After you've uh, sewn in your rectangle, you're gonna go ahead and mark a line down the, cent the exact center of it and you're gonna do two like little V lines. Now these are gonna be your cutting lines. Now what I usually do to make this cutting easier, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the pins that I put in earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna fold this in half, take a pin again, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it in here just to double check that I have folded this exactly through. So it looks like I'm pretty good, I'm just gonna wiggle it. but. Looks like I have my pins going through both ways. So the first thing I'm going to do after I've double checked is I'm going to go ahead and do a little quick snip. And then I'm going to cut through all layers down the one end and I'm going to cut through this little Y shape to the corners. Now you don't want to cut all the way through the stitching line. You want to cut right up to the stitch line. All right, so I got up to the end of the Y there. I've got to the stitch line, so I still have the stitch line in place. And on the other side. You're going to want to do this, uh, this step here and bound buttonholes in general before you attach your lining or your facing pieces. And you'll see why soon. Um, you know, just so you know, like this particular sample is going to be considerably easier to make than when you're working on your real garment. Uh, just because like this little snipping and this bending might be a little bit more difficult, like the more layers and bigger piece you have. Um, but uh, once you've done your snipping, you have a cut hole here. The next thing you're going to do is you're actually going to be turning this inside out. And this is where the uh, beginnings of your bound buttonhole start to look like an actual thing. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take this piece here and I'm going to stick it through the hole. And then you're going to do that to the other side as well. Turn that right side out and then start strengthening out like this lips piece. It's going to stick out all weird, uh, but that's when your iron comes into place. At the iron, you're going to go ahead and just double check 
Uh, what's going on here that everything flipped in, including these little tabs from the corners. So those there, there they are. I'm gonna go ahead and start to pin the lips of the bound buttonhole in place. So um, you're gonna go ahead and fold one side over like this little cut section here. So once that's kind of finger pressed in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take my iron, press it down a little bit. Now, same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, and make sure that when you're pressing it, across the opening of the buttonhole, it's flat and even, as straight as you can there. Now, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pin these lips in place so that they don't wiggle for the, when we go back to the sewing machine. But, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so you guys can kind of see what this looks like. Look at that, it's looking like a beautiful bound buttonhole. Give it, another, oop, give it another press to make sure that nothing wiggles. Now, um, in this step here, bef um, when we go back to the sewing machine, I'm gonna be stitching across, and let me grab a little pin here so I can show you guys here. I'm gonna be stitching across these portions here. Now you can do this by hand or you can do it by machine. I'm going to do it from machine just for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, just so that the spam buttonhole doesn't like open up, doesn't rip apart. So those are going to be um, tacking that button buttonhole in place. So let's go ahead and move on to that. Before you go ahead and stitch, just double check that your little point on the end is sticking out underneath and everything's pressed properly. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch that edge as I pointed out earlier. And in my case, mine's look, gonna look a little bit weird because I'm using a different color thread. <laughs> but you should use a matching thread if you can. After you've sewn the ends of the buttonhole closed, um, I've gone ahead and just trimmed down the, um, the lips of the fabric. So I've gone ahead and trimmed it down to about three quarters of an inch around the outside. Um, but you can't see that here because I've already sewn on my, like, my lining, like my fake facing. <laughs> so uh, from here, just to finish it up, I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple pins and I'm gonna stick them right at the ends of the, uh, the buttonhole. So right at the ends of the buttonhole, right down to the center. But I'm just gonna stick two, because you don't really need more than two. Now if I flip it, this is essentially the line of where this, uh, this bound buttonhole is. So I'm gonna go ahead and same way that I did before, I'm just gonna fold it in half. And identify the, make sure that these two look good. Identify the center of the buttonhole. And you can kind of wiggle your finger in between both of the, like the buttonhole lips. So now I'm gonna take my scissors. Now you wanna be really careful with this, not to cut into the lips of the buttonhole. You can just go through like the facing or the lining that you're using. Just a little tiny snip. You can take out your pins or no, actually I'll probably just leave them for now. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all the way down to the pins. And then same thing on the other side. Cool. So I'm taking my pins out. Now this is where it's actually starting to look like a regular buttonhole because you can now go through both the um, both the self fashion fabric and then the lining fabric. But you're gonna go ahead and just kind of fold it on just slightly. So this is like a sixteenth of an inch. It's like very very slightly. I'll stick some pins in there, but in general you might want to just do it at the iron because it might be easier to work with. But you're just gonna go ahead and continue to just fold just a tiny little bit of that fabric under. And I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on one end so you guys can kind of see how it's gonna be wrapped up. So I take my single threaded needle and thread and I'm going to just stitch that in place. And you're gonna wanna go all the way around your buttonhole, oops. <laughs> You're gonna wanna go all the way around your buttonhole just as I did in my original sample. Uh, just check out the website because I'll have some more detailed photos of this. But 
you want to go ahead and do that all the way around and once you've gone through the entire buttonhole just give it a really good press on both sides just so that the, the facing or the lining part stays down flat and then the outside of it stays down flat as well um, and then you'll be good to go. Anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. As I said, I, I know that there's so many different ways that you can do this. This is just what works for me and I've not had any problems with it. Um, also, I will be showing some more technique videos coming soon, so if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, but yeah, I hope you liked the video. Uh, like, share, subscribe as I said, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!